and welcome to Just One More Smartwatch. Yes, that's right. It took two years, but I've finally turned to the dark side of the force. If you are new here, I do a lot of bargain mechanical watch reviews and I do a lot of digital watch reviews. But to this point anyway, I haven't reviewed a smartwatch. I've been offered dozens of them and I bought several for myself, but none of them have been convincing enough for me to review on the channel. Either the watches themselves have been enormous and hideous carbuncles when you put them on wrist, or quite often the app that they come with has been a real letdown. And at least half of the functionality of the watch comes from the app. So if the app is crap, then the watch becomes crap as well. This is the Boslan W31. Now this one was sent to me by Boslan official store. I will leave a link and a discount code in the description of the video. If you're interested, you can pick it up for less than 45 US dollars and you're getting a chunk of tech on your wrist for less than a 50. Full color screen, heart rate monitor, exercise tracking and a rather trippy space theme. It's not perfect if I'm being honest. There are a number of areas that I think can be improved upon, but I've had a ton of fun wearing it and I can definitely see the potential of these budget smartwatches. Let's flip the camera and have a good look at it. So this is gonna be an adventure for us both, isn't it? First smartwatch review on the channel. This one arrived about three weeks ago. I feel that I've given it a good run. I feel that I've given it plenty of wrist time, trying to use all of the features. I think I've got a reasonable handle on its strengths and weaknesses. As intimated in the intro, this one was sent to me for free by the Boslan official store. I will leave their link in the description of the video and a discount code taking this one down to less than 45 US dollars. So where am I coming from? You know I'm a big fan of digital watches. I guess I'm looking at this as a $45 digital watch with, oh, let's get the box open, with a heap of extra features. Some of the functionality you're probably not gonna use on a regular basis, others you probably are. So it comes reasonably well packaged, just the watch itself and a charging cable. Just a USB cable, no adapter, obviously plug it into your computer or a current mobile phone adapter block. Now this little bit clips onto the back of the watch, it's magnetic and it only attaches to the watch one way up. You can't actually attach it the other way up, so you always get a good charge. Now it took two hours to charge and the battery they quote lasting about four to five days. I actually got five to six days out of it. I guess it's, it's a fresh battery, lithium ion battery as you'd find in your mobile. So I'm gonna start with dimensions and some specifications. Uh, then I'm gonna look at the, the watch itself. Then I'm gonna look at the app. I'm an Android user, so it's the Android version of the app. I'll do a screencast from my phone to show you the ins and outs of the app and some of the settings therein. So 48 millimeters in diameter, 54 millimeters lug tip to lug tip, only 14.6 mil thick though, so relatively slim, and that is relative to the diameter dimension today. 22 millimeter lug width, but only 75 grams. So it is a big boy, I guess that's good. You get a nice clear view of that all color screen there. Doesn't feel enormous though, certainly not massive on wrist. I'm not suggesting it'll slip under the cuff of a work suit though, far from it. The case I believe is made of plastic, but there is a stainless steel bezel on the outer. Hardened mineral crystal is what Boslan says for the glass covering the dial, certainly no scratches in the time that I've had it. And you can see a stainless steel case back there. They claim a stainless steel top ring. I'm guessing they mean the outer bezel there is also stainless steel, so it's not gonna react badly to your skin. There's a heart rate monitor built in. That's the charging terminals at the top. I'll talk about the heart rate functionality in just a second. Now, waterproof IP67. Because this is an electronic device, it is rated slightly differently. It's rated along the lines of a smartphone. IP67 is a dust and waterproof rating. Uh, Boslan claim it's the equivalent of five atmospheres of water resistance. I haven't been brave enough to test that. I wouldn't necessarily agree with them. I think it is splash proof. Uh, you can jump in and out of a pool perhaps with it, but I wouldn't be leaving it in water long term. Certainly, I wasn't brave enough to do that before I'd even made the video on this one. 
Okay, let's have a look at the functionality of the watch then. I'll talk about the different dial options that are available to you in just a second. So bottom left gets you into the menu system. You can cycle through the dials here. That's the select button and kind of backwards and forwards. There are a bunch of different dials. Most of them are frankly hideous that will be appearing in the moans and niggles section later on. I'm a big fan of digis though. So this one had quite a bit of appeal. Day date, kind of digital display, a bit of a solar system there. You've got either a rotating earth or a rotating solar system and a completely non-functional and superfluous compass and uh, proximity detector there for added fun. So next pusher gets you into the heart rate monitor. I'll pop that on wrist and show you how that works. Now the heart rate monitor I found to be reasonably accurate. You can set it on the app to do continuous monitoring or you can just do on the fly monitoring. Uh, it takes about 10 seconds to get a read and I found it to be reasonably accurate on a kind of instant read basis. Let's see if this one, am I alive today? And there we go, 71 beats per minute. I think that is a reasonable reflection of where I am today, not too many coffees. So after the heart rate monitor comes a sleep tracker, 6.4 hours last night. Again, I found the sleep tracker to be reasonably accurate. Uh, back out from there and we're into a fairly basic stopwatch. Start, stop, reset and quit. All works as it should. I have to say the full color, uh, they call it an HD color screen, is really quite spectacular. Very, very visible, very, very bright. Moving on to the next function is a camera. Now it doesn't actually have a camera contained within the watch, it's a little bit misleading, but you can operate the camera on your phone by giving the watch a shake. I'll maybe show you that later on. It's not all that great to be honest. Moving beyond that, messages, it will show. Robbie, I'll pick you up at 6 p.m. That's my brother-in-law. We're off to see the footy tonight. Obviously, once you sync this one up with Bluetooth to your phone, you can select a range of different messages. This was a Facebook message I received from him earlier on. Moving on from the messaging, we have Bluetooth, Bluetooth version 3.6. No problems with it connecting to my phone at all. And last but not least, cycling through the functions, battery. As discussed, I got about five days of charge from this one, pretty much as you'd expect. Again, depends how often you use the phone, depends how often you have the screen on, and if the heart rate monitoring is on, etc., etc. But as I mentioned earlier on, these cheap smartwatches really do live or die on the functionality of the app that comes with them. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so I'm on Android, as mentioned, Samsung Galaxy Note 9, if you're interested, a phone which I adore. I had no problems downloading the app. There is obviously an iOS app available for all you Apple users out there as well. Now, one thing that people have commented on, you can't register by entering your phone number. I had to register entering an email address, and once I did that, no problem at all. So here we are in the app. Profile, you can enter your user details here, height, weight, age, etc etc. My good friend, I'm guessing that's a social element. If there are a number of you who have these watches, you can all get together on the app. I don't have any good friends, so that has been a bit of a redundant feature for me. Now, on to the device. This is where you can adjust a lot of the settings via the app, but will affect the watch. Flip wrist brighten screen, pretty obvious. You can switch that on or off. A flick of the wrist and the screen will brighten. I found the screen a little bit too bright for me, to be honest, a little bit too sensitive, so I had it off. Any of those buttons you press will give about five seconds of screen brightness. Now, automatic heart rate monitoring, again, you can switch it on or off. I guess you'll get more battery life if you switch that off. I'm not completely convinced that the automatic heart rate monitoring is as accurate as it could be. I'll talk about that later. Now, do not disturb mode. Useful feature, stops all notifications going to your phone between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. So you're not being buzzed awake by a random email at four in the morning. Time format, 24 hour, 12 hour. These effects are instant. They change them instantly on the watch. Unit setting, metric or imperial. Now, message reminder, I couldn't get messages from my email client, but I was able to get WhatsApp messages, Facebook messages, SMS, and the notice of incoming calls, all with a fairly robust vibration, which was useful. Now, goal settings, if you don't walk enough, you can set an exercise goal, set number of steps, etc., etc. Similarly, if you're sleep deprived, 
your watch will let you know whether you're hitting your daily quota of sleep. Similarly, there's a health reminder. If you spend too much time sitting on your arse, you can adjust that. It'll let you know to get up and have a stretch of your legs, drinking water, useful in the Australian summer. Take those meds, and if you've got a, some kind of conference call, it will remind you of that as well. Alarm setting, vibrating alarm on the phone. Again, you can set that on or off. Bit of a moot point if your phone's next to you, you're probably just gonna use that anyway, but nice to have that added functionality. Now, shake the camera. I alluded to this earlier on. No camera on the watch, but with a flick of the wrist, you can actually take a photo using the camera app on your phone. Probably not gonna use that one all that often, I don't think, but there it is. Now, find the watch. This is a useful one if you've left the watch down the side of the sofa, this will cause it to vibrate. You'll be able to locate it more easily. Reset it, oops, notice of incoming Facebook message there. Reset if you wanna do a master reset, firmware update if indeed they have released some new software for the phone and unbound if you want to unlink it from your phone. What else have we got? We have got this record feature. Now, I went for a couple of brisk walks around my neighborhood this morning. I think the step goal, the activity tracking software is pretty accurate to my mind, certainly over the last couple of days. I was working last night, hence I'm still trotting around at one in the morning and then I had a good roam around between 10, 11, and 12 this morning. Calories obviously based on the height, weight, etc. that you have inputted. I would say this was pretty good, pretty accurate. Here's me yesterday, shift at work in the evening, and I'm wandering around the Opera House for a good few hours. Heart rate monitoring. I think the instant heart rate monitoring, as shown earlier on, is pretty accurate. Not convinced that I was at 78 at three in the morning unless I had a particularly interesting dream that I wasn't aware about. That would be something that you would need if you picked up one of these to, to see how it went over the long term. Sleep tracking though, I'm fairly confident that that is a reasonable, accurate reflection of the amount of sleep that I did or did not have last night. So not bad overall then, sleep tracking. Here's the night before, pretty similar kind of pattern. That's my kind of regular, regular sleep pattern anyway. So activity tracking, I think is pretty good. Heart rate monitoring, the jury's still out on that one. Now under sport, you also have the option of GPS tracking for running or cycling. But again, it's another one of these moot points. If you've got your phone with you, you're gonna be using Strava or another app anyway that is more comprehensive, but it does have that functionality nonetheless. Now back to the watch itself, and one push of the top right pusher brings up your daily activity tracking data. Bottom right pusher will take you into this sport mode. You can cycle through a variety of different exercises and the watch and software will make its best attempt at recording that and working out how many steps, heart rate and distance covered, etc., etc. So let's have a look at it on wrist. Not a small watch, that's for sure. Not super thick though, and only 75 grams, very comfortable rubber strap. I think this one doesn't do too badly for itself. You're not gonna get the earth for 45 US dollars. You're gonna have to accept a bit of compromise in terms of the packaging, but I think it's still pretty wearable. Wouldn't be trying to get away with it with a suit though, I have to say. And that's it, zoomed out a little bit higher. I have a seven inch wrist for your reference. So a pretty full color dial and a bunch of functionality, most of which actually works. $45, I think you're getting a chunk of fun. Put it that way, I have enjoyed this one. What have I not enjoyed so much? Well, heart rate monitor, I'm not entirely convinced that that one is as accurate as it should be. And there is a bit of a limit to the functionality of the watch itself. Given that there's a little computer that we could send a man to the moon contained within this thing, they could have probably added a couple of extra functions. Uh, why just a basic stopwatch? Why don't we have countdown timers and things like that? Don't quite understand that. Why do we have a tachymeter bezel but no chronograph function contained within it? Why do we have this GMT in a Reho chapter ring? but no GMT functionality either. They could probably have added a couple more of these screens that weren't quite as awful. I mean, who on earth wants to look at that? 
I certainly don't. It looks like half of the inner workings of a, a watch and half of the inner workings of a computer here. I don't really get that one at all. Some of these dials are pretty, pretty unattractive. There is some kind of pseudo space theme running to this watch's marketing campaign. I believe Boslon are trying to convince you that the watch is an alien and has selected you as its partner on planet Earth bit hokey really. I do like the digital one here with the solar system etc and the battery readout but they could probably have done well with putting a couple of basic three-handers in there without all of that space nonsense. A GMT facility, a chronograph facility, a couple of extra timers etc I think would have added a lot more functionality to the watch itself. Surely that wouldn't have been too difficult. But overall, how can I not be impressed with so much tech for 45 US dollars? The watch itself feels fairly well made, robust, solid item. All the pushers work nicely and it hasn't given me any grief in terms of the software or the hardware over the last three weeks. It may be my first smartwatch review. I don't think it's going to be my last. So there you have it, the Boslan W31 then. If you put those aliens to one side, potentially the best smartwatch under 50 bucks. If you know of one better, please, I would love to hear about it. Leave me a comment, I'll be reading those avidly. Not perfect as noted, uh, the heart rate monitor, certainly erratic over a long term basis, but I think this watch has a lot of potential. Surely all you need to do to add more functionality to the watch itself is update the software and the app was pretty reliable in operation. The watch itself was light, comfortable, and the battery lasted the claimed five days, if not a little bit more on my wrist anyway. For less than 45 bucks, I think if you're interested in picking up a cheap smartwatch to start you off, see how it fits into your life, you could probably do a lot worse than this one. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.